Hello, and welcome to the Banker's Tech Talk video series, looking at all things fintech. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor at The Banker. And with me is Lawrence Wintermeyer, Chair of Global Digital Finance, an industry membership body that promotes the adoption of best practices for crypto assets and digital finance technologies. Lawrence, thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure, Joy. Great to see you. So do you think that the growth of crypto assets is really a threat to the global financial system, you know, as warned, let's say, by the Basel Committee? I don't think so, um, um, but um, I think most importantly, the GDF community uh, doesn't think so, and most policymakers don't think so. Uh, we get a regular read from the Financial Stability Board, the FSB, uh, just on this risk of the material risks of crypto, and they do pretty comprehensive deep dive analysis mm -hmm. on this. And, and to date, um, you know, there, there aren't really any risks that they see. Central bankers would echo that. In, in their last report, I noted, and I think this is pretty important for us at GDF, that there could be future risk or um, reputational exposure to institutions and regulators as we get into the wide stream adoption of crypto and digital assets in payments, settlement, and wealth. So that's the future warning, and that's exactly why we set global digital finance up, to get regulators together with industry, you know, startups and the institutions, and develop policies, codes, and standards so that we can avoid that type of volatility. And it, 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 I think it's important, a lot of this, you know, with early technology like blockchain and mm -hmm. digital assets, is as much about the knowledge of how it all works and the risk. You know, we've got technologists, financial services, regulation, legislation, uh, capital, all coming together with this. Mm. What we all have in common, whether we're policymakers or, or our, our members who are actually out there you know, delivering blockchain digital crypto asset solutions, is that we're focused on developing the policies to protect not just consumers, but businesses, counterparties, and make the whole infrastructure and the sort of end-to-end -end process a much higher quality than it is now because it's just early days. What are some of the initiatives, let's say, that GDF is working on that can really address these challenges? You talk about bringing the whole community together, um, but sort of what practical things are you doing? We set it up more than a year and a half ago, but it was actually founded by more than 200 individual members from small and big firms that have come together to deliver industry practices and codes of conduct. Mm. So the first and foremost, we're actually a global standard setting body. And global because it's digital, um, we're trying to set up a supranational code, which are all about the ethics, the, the sort of rules of the road that everyone needs to you know, really follow in this area before you get into jurisdictional regulation. You know, mm -hmm. Securities laws are different all over the world, as are things around currency, fiat, you know, settlement. So, so the supranational code is all about getting standards out that uh, our industry members can adopt and say, say to regulators and policy leaders, look, we're, we're, we're doing the right thing, but we're open to working with you to help make sure that we're all doing the right thing at a jurisdictional level. Um, so we, we you know, produce a lot of codes of conduct. We do a lot of regulatory outreach, not just with regulators, but with the FSB, or there's a financial advisory task force on financial crime going. We're doing quite a bit of outbound on that. Okay, my last question though is, do you think self-regulation will be enough? Or do you think the regulators will need to step in at a certain point? Self-regulation in the context of SROs, which we're not, uh, we're a global standard setting body. Mm. SROs typically tend to have um, some sort of d jurisdictional uh, delegation mm. by, by regulators. And so I think our view would be, well, well, look, if there are going to be SROs, as there are in, uh, I think, Switzerland, to deal with digital assets, we're always happy to work with them. Um, but I think the answer to your question is we, we would like to see, I mean, I think the SRO model in a number of other industries works very well. Mm. Um, it, it just doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, f fully fledged or up and running in financial services or different, d different verticals of financial services in many, many markets. So I think that's a space to watch, but we, we certainly promote working with jurisdictional SROs to, to, to really get these codes adopted. Mm. And, and really, again, to let, let industry know, look, uh, we're responsible, uh, you know, we, we, we can manage these risks on our own in a way without, uh, you know, having to necessarily have full regulatory oversight of what's going on. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Lawrence. Always a pleasure, Joy. Thank you.